NTSB details what led up to Cold War plane crash at Michigan Air Show. Van Buren Township, Michigan. Two pilots flying in an Ypsilanti Air Show on Sunday were circling for a second pass when they experienced a difficulty with the plane's engine and ejected before it crashed in the parking lot of a nearby apartment complex, a National Transportation Safety Board investigator said Monday. The airplane had made one pass down the runway, there were going to be three passes total, culminating in a landing. They were circling around for the second pass when they experienced the difficulty, said NTSB Senior Air Safety Investigator John Brannan. After the plane hit the ground, it traveled around 500 feet through trees and landed near the Waverly on the Lake Apartments in Van Buren Township. The pilot Daniel Filer of Texas, according to Federal Aviation Administration records had serious but not life-threatening injuries, Brannon said during the Monday press conference. The co-pilot suffered minor injuries. It was unclear if the two pilots were still hospitalized Monday. The cause of Sunday's crash isn't known yet, but new details emerged Monday as a team of experts started their investigation. Brannon said the plane experienced engine loss of power issues. A team was on the scene late Monday morning, documenting it and coordinating with a recovery crew to take the airplane off-site to do further investigation. A preliminary report is expected in around 10 days, but it could take up to two years to issue the final report. Right now, all the information is preliminary and we can't draw any conclusions, Brannon said. The fact that both pilots survived and there were no ground injuries is a very good outcome. The Environmental Protection Agency also has officials on site to address any potential fuel contamination issues, he added. The two pilots ejected from the MiG-23 UB fighter plane, which is a Russian plane, in midair at Willow Run Airport at 4.15 p.m. on Sunday and were rescued from Belleville Lake, according to the Wayne County Airport Authority. The pilots had declared an emergency and ejected immediately, NTSB said. Brannon said the fact the plane is Russian could complicate the investigation. The fact that it is a Russian military airplane and there's no what we call a flight certificate that civilian airplanes have with details of the manufacturers that you can go to for assistance in this, which will make this more difficult, Brannon said. A number of factors can go into why pilots would make the decision to eject from a plane, including altitude, speed and the type of plane, said Brannon. All of those different factors play a role in that, he said. It varies from case to case. NTSB investigations aim to determine probable cause in transportation accidents. In some cases, they recommend changes for regulators, equipment manufacturers, companies or state and local governments to prevent future crashes. In video footage of the event, two figures can be seen dropping as clouds of black smoke burst from the plane. The airport authority said the jet crashed into unoccupied vehicles in the apartment complex's parking lot. The plane is a fixed-wing, single-engine retired Russian military plane built in 1981, according to Brannon and FAA records. Brannon said that makes it even more challenging because manufacturers often help investigators determine what went wrong in crashes. In this kind of case, I'm not sure what kind of support we'll get, he said. This year marks the 25th anniversary of the Thunder Over Michigan Air Show, which started at 3 p.m. on Sunday. Just before the show began, the president and CEO of the Yankee Air Museum, Kevin Walsh, said the 55 modern and vintage military planes that make up the show are requested from all over the world. The theme this year was Greatest of Thunder, including a performance by the F-22 Raptor I. While distraught, the Yankee Air Museum, which hosts the airshow as the museum's annual fundraiser, declined further to comment on the incident Monday and deferred to the Wayne County Airport Authority. Randy Wimbley, spokesman for the Wayne County Airport Authority, said the FAA informed them they're preparing to hand off the investigation to the NTSB. The FAA does not host news conferences on crashes, he added. U.S. Rep. Debbie Dingell, D.N. Arbor, said she had been in touch with authorities about the crash. It appears at this time that both pilots are safe, and there has been no human injury, Dingle said in a release. Completing comprehensive physical assessments to ensure everyone's safety is, the, top priority right now. The plane hit a silver pickup truck near Unit 18 of the subdivision and a large portion of the plane, its wheel and dark brown pockets of grass were still visible at the crash site Monday. Crews were picking up debris Monday morning and Emilio Cancel, 28, said he saw crews at the subdivision overnight with spotlights searching through the field since the plane crash. Cancel, who has been a resident of a unit at Waverly on the lake for four years, said he saw the plane crash in the field initially from his balcony. His unit is on the perimeter of the crash site. He saw grass and trees catch fire on the plane's way down and he ran out to the scene. We were watching TV and we heard a big boom, and then we're like, what the heck is that? Cancel said. I looked outside, and all of, a, sudden, I see something boom, blew up right here, he said. The biggest fireball I've ever seen.
Cancel added. It was crazy. I felt the shock. Our whole building shook, like we're getting bombed, I noticed it was a plane and I was worried for the pilots. I didn't know where the pilots ejected. The whole field was on fire. Everything was on fire. It was messed up. He said he believes the fire didn't spread more throughout the field because of rocks that are planted near a spring. I had a friend at Unit 18 they had to evacuate over there, he said. Luckily, the building didn't end up catching fire. Cancel looked through binoculars to see crews pick up debris Monday morning along with a few other residents like Paul Skazitsky, 72, who snapped photos. Skazitsky was at Diamondback Saloon in Belleville watching the air show originally. He said he saw the plane start flaming over his head and heard the sounds when the pilots ejected. I saw the whole thing. I did not sleep very well last night because at that time I didn't know they ejected, Skazitsky said. There, was so much black smoke, I couldn't get close to it, I can definitely smell that smell, I'm going to remember that for a long time. Skazitsky and his wife have been living in the area for 40 years and said it hit too close to home. I'm not staying around for air shows anymore, he said. It's always been a worry for all of us, they just lucked out that they didn't hit an apartment, how fortunate they are that it didn't go into, a 94. C. 2023 The Detroit News. Visit the Detroit News at www.deatnews.com. Distributed by Tribune Content Agency, LLC.